Hey everybody, Mark Wood and Laura Kay here on our second um, hangout with our great, incredible faculty of the MW Rock home version. And we're gonna be creating an incredible experience for everybody this summer uh, that will be completely different and so interesting because we're gonna be combining different elements of the classroom experience into your home. So you don't need to leave at all your house. And it's gonna be very, very exciting. I've got the incredible Nathan Blake. Give us a heads up, a wave. Nathan Blake, our choreographer and movement coach. He's awesome. He's been with us for many years. We've got the incredible Dr. David Wallace, who's here from Berkeley and from Boston. We've got the great Matt Venicaro, our great keyboard player and our tech wizard. And in fact, we're all sort of wizards. And I'm thinking that this summer, we're going to be doing the magic on everybody by creating an online experience that's really going to be different than what you would think. Um, and we're very excited about it. And I want to go right to, let's see, I want to start with Dr. David Wallace, because I love David. And um, I, I will never forget meeting you and you working with us. And one of the finest moments of, of I think, I, and I don't know if you can agree with me, David, was the ASTA uh, speech that you gave at the keynote. Uh, however long, I don't know when, when that was, but your keynote speak, uh, speaker, do you have a text of the entire speech that we can post or YouTube? You know, I, sh I should look for that. I know I've got an audio recording, but I, I don't think I have any video. That was actually 2010, Mark. That was I'll never time flies, it. man. But yes, I actually I talked to I talked to asked about what's kind of the the con the content of my course for VM Rock. Um, yes, namely composition. I played Viper and gave people an earful about creativity and creating with their students. And I'm happy to say that in 2020, there's a lot of strange things, but I can say that the creativity that is happening in the middle schools and the high schools, the elementary schools with orchestra is light years beyond where we were in 2010. So I, I really wanna thank you and electrify your strings as well as the excellent educators out there who have been really taking the ball and running with it. Well, also Berkeley, you are now the director up at Berkeley of Strings, and that catapulted that program into the beyond. And I am so thrilled that you've changed the landscape up in an, the most important, it's the Harvard of electric violins, right? The electric strings. The, the, you know, that's an interesting branding thing. I might have to file that, but, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the beautiful things is, um, you know, being a part, I mean, I loved Juilliard and I loved working there. There were many, it was a, a really intense environment, but it's, it's really great to have uh, an environment where everyone embraces creativity, everyone embraces the future, everyone embraces technology, everyone values individual expression. So in some ways, the, the values which we have created and, and insisted on with MW Rock are the very same things that we do at Berkeley. So that's why I've really been an honor to be in a, on board with this from the beginning. Yes. Um, and it's, uh, it's just a pleasure. This is my 11th year. And your wow. classes are so insane at the camp. And it's going to be even more insane with us being at home and exploring your creativity. Give us a couple of little hints. I don't. I know you don't want to give it a total away. Give us a couple of hints. Sure. <laughs> well, well, my course is entitled "Composing from the Heart and Mind," mm. and in particular, what I really love about the opportunity this summer is to dive deep to do some things that I couldn't do in Kansas. I mean, one of the things that I really loved, and you know, so Laura's asked us to think about favorite memories, and when I think about my favorite memories of camp it was cultivating these group identities with people that you'd see every day, you know, and it would be those groups who work with you, they'd create music together, they'd improvise together, they'd discover together. And just 
every group would have its own personality. And the thing that I'm really thrilled about is that's going to continue because we will have these courses, only now it'll be kind of multiplied because people can be a part of four of those groups. But you know, really the focus of mine is about composition. We didn't have time to do individual composition or really larger scale or detailed approaches. And so that was the first thing when I found out, okay, we're going to be doing this home edition, going online and doing the lessons. It was like, okay, well, now's the time to really put the spotlight on the individual. Now's the time when we can dive deep and say, okay, maybe we can't do the normal group playing that we normally would do in the same room, but now's the time that instead of just being the orchestra member, you're going to be the producer, the composer, the videographer, the choreographer, the songwriter. And so that it's like we're fleshing out the skill set and rather than, okay, you're just a part of this, you are the director of all that. And the other thing is that because it's happening in a classroom environment with people tracking daily, spending that one-on-one -on -one time or small group on one time with faculty, there will be that opportunity to, to dive deep and give that individual attention. Because sometimes when you've got 20 people in an orchestra combo or something, it's hard to give people more than a second or two here or there, but the fact that we are able to have people working offline, working in advance, working together, we're going to have a beautiful balance between individual creativity and group support. So mm. I, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Oh, I am too. And we're going to be seeing a lot of the product of this experience yeah. with you and your class. Now, in the past, your performances have been so memorable at the camp. You're live because, you know, you're a great educator, you're a great musician, you're a great fiddler, you're a great classical viola player. You go from Hindemith to Texas Swing in seconds. That, to me, is a, such an incredible talent that very few people have. But your performances are so crazy. I know that you're still working on it. You, what are you guys cooking up? Are you still Hindemith, well, Texas uh, Swing? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually I've been tagging Matt because it's like I, I mean this will be the fourth year that Chuck Bontrager and I are going to do a virtual Chuck and David show. I love and, it. And uh, it's like our, I, we, I, I told Chuck I said, look, man, every year we we probably bite off more than we should chew, and he responded, well, why should this year be any different? So. <laughs> I mean, if, if we do what our vision is, it's going to be like a whole full long 12 song extravaganza. There will definitely be a lot of the things you've come to expect from us. There will be punk, there will be metal, there will be psychedelic rock, there will be modern classical, there will be some new stuff that I've been arranging and composing and there will be a ton of surprises that will make people laugh or cry or have their jaws on the floor. It's like, did, did Chuck just do that? Yes, he did. <laughs> and I did that because he told me to do that. It's like we, we both have a way of egging each other on, you know, and I'm thrilled Laura's going to be involved. Matt's going to be involved. We've got a whole lot of cast of thousand things. So it's, we're, we're cranking out the arrangements. So if anything, people will be getting more from the concert. I mean, yeah, there won't be a mosh pit unless you have a watch party and have your mosh pit in the privacy of your own living room. But because we don't have I love to deal. That. But, but yeah, actually that should be uh, how to have your own virtual mosh pit in, <laughs> in your living yeah. room. No, yeah. I, I, I mean, one of the things that's beautiful is, um, you know, our faculty are doing a combination. Some are doing live stream concerts. If you have not tuned into Hayden Vitera's live stream concerts, oh. Get yourself an appointment for the next one because they're always amazing. You know, 100% live. We will have some faculty who are taking that route. We have some faculty like Joe Denenzone who are going to be doing some live webcast, but also premiering a brand new video. Um, like the, that one year when he premiered that new 12 minute long prog rock epic. And uh, Chuck and I are going to be filming everything in advance, but because of all those things, we are able to give you more music. Chuck and I could never give you an hour's worth of music in the past because we had to deal with 
set up sound yeah, change rehearsals. transitions getting the virtual chuck and david philharmonic on the stage you know just all these different uh logistics and we don't have that those time constraints now so we're actually trying to pack in more than we ever have before because i mean the faculty's always like well how can we do what best something better than we did last year and well, we always finish the year saying i don't know Right. And we always move into the next year doing it anyway. So Right. And there's always this is what we love about you guys is that year after year after year you just keep raising the bar for yourselves, which is really what all of us as musicians, this is how we live. So and this is how we try to work with all of our campers who come to get them to think that way as well, to constantly raise the bar and and to think outside of the box and, and that there are no boundaries creatively and that if you can think it, keeping that creative valve open, like Val was talking the other day when we did this, the Facebook Live and she was saying that her class is going to focus on helping to keep all that creative stuff open because that's really how you can, how you can get to that. But I always love what you guys come up with and I'm excited to sing the song that well, I will keep quiet and well, not tell anybody about. <laughs> with what Chuck we've been show. doing <laughs> at camp for 10 years is crushing the boundaries and and disintegrating them with nuclear bombs of creativity that I, I love, love it every summer it's like oh my god what's gonna happen this time and I sit back in the audience and this time I'm gonna be, be sitting back in front of my TV set enjoying this incredible concert and David we love what you contribute to our string world we are just a platform for you to expand your whole imagination. And somebody actually commented um, for you, should campers bring new ideas or older ones to flesh out? Uh, who knows? Yes to both of those, bring everything. Yeah, That's, my thought is bring yeah. everything, right? I mean, I'm still working on songs that I started 10, 12 years ago. If it's an idea, sometimes you're just not ready to flesh it out at that particular moment, right? It can be pretty much anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing that I can tell you is the way we are designing the course, we are designing them to be individually tailored so people can yeah. enter them wherever they are, whether they're an expert with decades of experience and under their belt or whether they're like, wow, I've, I've, I've never written a song before. You know, I mean, Valerie Vagoda is working on a songwriting course. So, you know, I think both are acceptable, you know, and I think the other beauty is there's going to be a lot more free unstructured time than we had in Kansas and so that people will have that time to work offline to explore their own thing on their own way and their own pace you know so it's I I think we're the beautiful thing about our artist mentors is they're ready to meet everybody where they are and take them where they want to go yes that's great and that's great um, I want to bring in uh, Matt Venicaro, our wizard of the music world. Um, and you know, uh, the, the, the whole latency issue technology is going to be not a big part of this experience because we're going to be recording on Soundtrap. We're going to be recording tracks together. The only tiny latency is the natural stuff when somebody speaks and you have to pause and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue at all at our camp, right, Matt? No, we've we yeah, found well, we're, we're looking for. Um, sorry, we're we're looking, you know, to to work more asynchronously, which is the way that it is professionally done. You know, I know that everyone's looking for an online, you know, collaboration, sort of online rehearsing at the same time stuff. But you know, there's there's two things behind that. Number one, there really isn't a viable solution that is commercial and easy to implement yet. But more importantly, number two, that is not the way it's done in the professional world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tracking remotely is not new. Tracking remotely has been around for a long time, um, and and these are skills that you you need to have as a musician. You can't bury your head in the sand and not know how to you know work within the system you need to know if you are a logic user how do i collaborate with someone on pro tools if i'm using soundtrap how do i collaborate with someone who's using cubase um you know the musicians that throw their hands up and can't figure that out are the ones that don't have a successful career and don't make money um, right you know like so um you know this type of thing it's funny is that i am i am excited you know as excited as ever to 
to to work in this particular environment because this is the environment I've been I've been you know working this way forever. I mean that's why I built my home studio. I built my home studio so I didn't have to pay to go into a studio anymore in the city, you know, and I've been able to track for people and mix people and you know people come to my studio for specific things for vocals, for electric violin. I mean, you know, my studio has become the northeast like electric violin stop you know, because of <laughs> from Emrock and working with all the cast of yeah. characters yeah. there. But that's it's like why why pay three times as much to go into Manhattan with someone who doesn't have anything invested in your music? when you can you know build your own build out your own studio equipment and you don't need um it's not like back in the day you know when i first got started i needed a big gig that gave me a you know a ten thousand fifteen thousand dollar amount to drop and build the home studio and you can you can make you don't need that anymore you know mm -hmm. that's and i know a lot of people lamented the sort of death of the commercial studio and commercial studios still have their place um, but I, I don't, you know, I have a more optimistic view, uh, you know, I, I'm a lot more, I guess, uh, you know, socialist in my recording and music. I, I like the idea that anyone can make music that sounds good anymore, that, you know, the barrier used to be, you could be a great songwriter, but you couldn't afford to go to a studio to get that downtown sound. And that barrier is not there anymore. So now you can be a great songwriter and have a great finished product without having to drop, you know, 10 grand of an investment. Um, you know, the, the most, it's funny, I've been writing for this uh, publication, Ask Audio, for about 10 years now. And the most controversial article I ever wrote, I got really mad. Stevie Nicks um, wrote this, uh, did this interview where they asked her, if, you know, is there going to be a new Fleetwood Mac album? And she's and she was very grouchy, I guess, at the time and just said, you know, no, I'm never going to do one again. There's no money in that. You know, it costs, you know, a million dollars to make a good album. And, you know, I can't make that money back. And I just I wrote this piece, you know, in anger. But it was still, I think, a good piece of writing about the obnoxiousness of saying that I of anyone saying I can't make a good album unless I have a million dollars. Right is insane like you know i can make a good album with an iphone and a hundred dollar microphone that i get at best buy like it's so i i think that i don't lament the the idea of sort of where the music business was i look at where it's going now and what it enables young people to do um so i'm going to focus on that quite a lot you know i have a great home studio I'm going to show you 5% of it. I'm going to talk much more about what can you, you know, you can do so much more with knowledge than you can with expensive gear. And um, if you know what you're doing, you can sound really, really good for a very, very small amount of money mm. right now. And so that's another what we're going to work um, on. A wonderful gift you give us, Matt, is not just your technical expertise. And by the way, you work with a digital performer, Mark of the Unicorn. You work with all these great companies, well respected. But when I hear an Elton John song, a <laughs> Billy Joel song, and then Chick Corea, Spain, I mean, those concerts are magical. What, what do you have up your sleeve yeah. this time? So I've, I've got a lot of different ideas. Um, you know, if I can make it happen, I, I certainly would not mind, uh, again, since this is a unique opportunity to see if I can get some of the guys from my own band, um, you know, to oh. play, which would be nice. So, you know, I, every, you know, everyone knows like a lot of my influences I have always loved, like, I mean, I've loved Return to Forever, Dirty Loops, um, you know, uh, ev everything, you know, I, I, I love, uh, Corey Henry and, 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 mm. you know, fusion -y stuff. So my, you know, my band that I've played in for years has, has always been sort of like fusion -y pop covers and stuff. And I've never really had the opportunity to bring that. I haven't really wanted to bring that to, to M rock because I, I create that stuff with them, you know? So I, I don't really, I didn't feel comfortable taking like the stuff that we did together and then putting it out there as mine. Cause it's not mine at all. It's, it's definitely ours. So if I can get all those guys together in a safe way, you know, we'll do that. If not, then I will, uh, I have, of course, my, my typical, I never go, I, you know, David is so well organized. He has like the theme, like planned out. So like I go completely the opposite and I, I don't do any unifying theme. And I always just try to pick the really farthest, farthest reaches of the world that I can 
in in the strangest you know sense. So I do have yes, I mean I have that. I still have that as well in and in, in the back of my head of uh, some really you know wide ranging interesting um, choices. I I like to take M Rock. Um, you know, when we're when we're teaching at MROC, I think one of the best things about the faculty is that we all practice what we preach. We are trying to get you to do something new and to come out of your shell. I do not like to recycle stuff that I've already, you know, that I that I know already. So I like every year to push myself and go, you know what, I will play a song on guitar and sing. That's not my strong point, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to make myself do it. And as far and even on the piano, you know, like I'll do this chick tune, I'll do a Return to Forever tune. I love listening to that stuff. I don't get a chance to play it a lot. So it's I like doing that. I like living by what we're telling everyone. And I think this will be no different. You know, I'm joking, but we're... You know, we're working on Dave's stuff, and he, you know, needs a bass for a track. And he's like, I think I'll just learn how to play bass now. And <laughs> I've been calling, I've been calling him Jocko Dave Wallius for the last like <laughs> two weeks. Oh uh, my god, that's know, perfect. I won't, you know, I won't say don't, what don't he's working on. Don't let too many on, kittens out of the bag, man. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't go too nuts. But like, that's what we do. You know, we all, you know, we all, we all do that kind of stuff and try to try to think what can we do. Um, you know, at some point, it's it's not as much like what can I do better than last year. It's like what can I do different? Yeah, because that's what we're trying to get everyone else to do. So it's easier to it's easier to teach that if you live by it because you you experience it. You know, you you know all the same feelings. I know all the same feelings that everyone has out there of trying something new because I'm constantly trying to get myself to try something new. Yes, that's wonderful, Matt, and thank you. We really cherish your time with us and your investment yeah. of your talents. And Absolutely. Laura is gonna finish our last wonderful person because uh, Laura just exercised to Nathan Blake this morning on my yeah. porch that I had to watch and the cats were watching. <laughs> yeah, we make Mark endure that every single morning. And then, and then he comes over and he, he comes next to me, he goes, you're really sweaty. It's like, well, yeah, <laughs> yes, that, that's kind of the point. Um, first of all, happy Juneteenth um, and definitely. And uh, we are, and second of all, oh. I could not be more excited about introducing this person who has not only changed my life on a personal level, but, but as we've worked together over the years, watching the contributions to when we work, not only with choirs, but with orchestras and with the whole understanding of movement and how important that is because um, orchestras typically are like this. And as we spoke about the other day, how many of these virtual videos have we been seeing floating around out there with people just staying still and no expression on their face and nothing. So ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Blake. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're planning for all of us and for our campers this, this well, MW Rock. The history of uh, me getting here um, as we started um, when we first met, you know, about um, seeing what Mark does and everything like that, <clears throat> and collaborating with that, with what I what I do. Um, first coming here, I would say I came from um, um, uh, with Juneteenth, I'm Afro-American, so I came from more R&B and hip hop. My dad was a jazz musician, that's where my mom met him, um, playing with the old Harmon organ, and uh, mm. from the church and stuff. Um, I would say that um, what I do is exactly what I learned from you guys. Um, one of the things you do when you meet other people, uh, my grandmother has told me you take, you give of something and you take from something. I mean, that if you buy somebody, you should be able to give them something and you should be able to take something from them. And um, seeing everything that I've seen what you guys do, I think what you find, what I found out in my years here is, um, when you say push it, you say push it because you don't know exactly where you're at. And so I didn't know uh, exactly how to infuse, you know, uh, what we do because you got um, classical music, classic rock, uh, rock, funk, um, all kinds of styles. But no matter what happens from the start to finish, it's all movement. And so the good thing about this, where it presents us is when you're live, the movement person is trying to um, manifest what the musical person is coming out. You want the movement to to express 
what the music person's coming out. This is a crazy, it's really, it's mind blowing because then when it opens you up is to see how you can use that movement in, in a certain way virtually. So now it's kind of like, it can be cinematic, like a movie. And now you're trying to see how you can take that movement and use other angles. How can you, when the, when the hand comes across, it's out, but then it can come right back up and then it comes out. So you can, now your platform is different because certain things you can't do that live. And the eye, the way it does, catches that along with the movement, along with everything else. So like what um, Matt just said, it's awesome to think that I'm like, okay, well, I only been doing this way. But then when I see Chuck, Dave, Doc, everyone else do something, I'm like, oh man, this is crazy. Okay. They're doing this because then I can start seeing how they piece the puzzles together. It's, um, it's like, a, like, a, uh, like, a, like a chaos, like a, like a crazy, uh, you know, it's chaotic, but yet constructive. And they find how to get into other areas of their creativity in their mind. So now I'm mixing along with that. But when I see it, I look at Mark when he plays the Viper. I see you with the hand. I see uh, Doc with the hair. I see Matt, how he does different styles. And I'm thinking, okay, my job is to make this thing come virtually and yet get the same thing. Most of the time when I see the kids, they love seeing Mark play. They love seeing Doc and stuff like that. What they don't know is how to present themselves physically. They really don't. They just kind of think um, they're so caught up, enamored with the technique of playing something, they totally forget. Like I come from a sports background, but when you sit up, you have, you know, you say everyone chest up, sit up, something. If you get closer, it makes you bigger. If you get further out, it makes you something like that. But angles and everything like that does something to the performer. And you should know about that. You should know whatever your whatever it is, you got bigger shoulders, it means smaller waist. It, dimensions and everything matter and how you present yourself because I'm like, these kids are gonna be doing an audition. I remember when I did my dance, when I'm, uh, I have a dance degree from Hofstra, I had to send in a videotape of me dancing. And whatever your positives are, you elaborate, you elaborate upon them. I'm like, well, these guys are gonna be playing something. They're gonna be playing something for an audition or doing their own thing. They're gonna be on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever it's gonna be. And they're gonna be wanting someone to uh, watch them in the, in, the, in the best light. And I'm like, well, they most likely, they're just thinking about playing. They really don't ever, no one ever really, at that stage, they don't really think about movement or how they present themselves, how they stand, how their song is. I'm like, they look at someone when they see Mark stand, but they get caught up like, oh my God, but they don't understand what he's doing, how his legs are, how his legs are presented, how his shoulders anger, I'm not, how, his, uh, how they're angled or something like that. So for mine, I'm gonna collaborate. I told you I like the um, uh, uh, the body electric type theme, um, but I'm gonna use, that's just a, a base of using the body electric and some other things, forms, because I like trying to see if I can use my background with Afro-American, R&B, hip hop, stuff like that, but with my ballet, and now I learned rock from you guys and kind of put it in the goulash <laughs> oh, Nathan, we so appreciate, you know, when you came on board with us, um, it is so hard to get kids, especially street players to move, breathe, blink. They don't even blink. They're frozen and, and they're sawing and, and it's never music. So how do we introduce the music part is through movement. How do we introduce emotion into their playing? It's all for movement. And you introduced that when we did Sioux Falls, where you had a thousand kids you know, middle school is having to move. They can't, you ain't just sitting there, you're moving and you, you're you so wonderful with that. And we really appreciate it. I'm really excited. And I really feel that when you came on board, it changed, uh, uh, it addressed the situation that has been plaguing our string world from day one, which is expressing expression, but not just a little smile actually moving, walking, dancing, spinning, you know, all this great stuff that makes performance that much more cherishable. Great guys. And that's, so actually, that's actually what's going to be so special about the videos that are coming out of, out of this home edition of MW Rock is that they're all going to be scripted. 
And it's not just going to be a bunch of faces on screen. It will be people dancing and moving and filming and submitting more than one video to us, all coached by all of us, right. but, our, but by our movement coach, Nathan, who will help with your angles class. And by the way, if you want to find out more about anybody's class, go to the website at mwrock.com slash faculty and all of their videos are right there at the top. Um, and you can watch everybody's video. We're, before we go, two things. One, Chuck Bontrager, unfortunately, was not able to make it today. Uh, and so we're going to try to show his video yeah. um, in, in lieu of him being here. But before we do that, I want to say a huge shout out of gratitude to the people who are donating to the Markwood Music Foundation right now. Um, every dollar you give is helping a young musician or singer get to camp and we really want to like every year i don't know if you guys are aware but every year we give out 40 scholarships sometimes up to 40 scholarships of partial or full um in many instances it comes out of our pocket because we can't say no we want to say yes yes to everyone we want all these kids there everybody who wants to be there we want them there um we are just announcing, watch for next week for a big announcement. For camp is less than four weeks away. We're about three and a half weeks out. We know that money is very tight for everybody, especially in COVID-19 days. So we've just instituted a brand new payment plan where you can sign up for camp today and you don't have to do your last payment until September. So you can still come, you can have access to all the classes, you can download everything afterwards. By the way, that's another thing I wanted to address, address really important. A lot of people, when they think about this stuff, they think, oh, I'm gonna be spending eight hours a day in front of my computer. No, you're not. That's the beauty of this. Each course is going to be presented in nice bite-sized pieces through video, and then each day, each of our faculty members will be available for a specified number of office hours live. We're in small 15 minute chunks. We'll have a tiny group of people that we can work on one on one or two on five people at a time, just a handful of people at a time. And that can go to address one of the questions that came in earlier about how do we rehearse people in an, this kind of a setting. Like Matt said, the technology has not yet really been invented to allow that to happen in real time, but you can still do small ensemble rehearsals by just spotlighting one person at a time. You hear them play, then you mute them and you can work. It's, it's actually in many ways, a much better way of learning and teaching because you're getting to the individuals and you're, they don't have a chance to hide in their section. So we can help you much, much more on an individual basis and spotlight you, which leads me to one of my favorite MW Rock memories, which is one year I'm wandering around the halls and I see a whole bunch of people going, I am David Wallace. I am David Wallace. <laughs> and everybody's walking around and I'm like, what the heck is going on there? Now I had no idea, Dave, what you're doing in your class. But to me, the light bulb went off that was like, oh, for me, it meant spotlight. And so I took that. And from that point forward, Nathan and I started incorporating that with all the choirs that we work with. And we give them a spotlight exercise, except we have. And by the way, this can work at home just as well as it does in person, probably better at home because you don't have a billion people watching you, where we just have the person say, you know, I am Laura Kay and my spotlight is purple. And tell us the color of your spotlight and turn, flick that switch on and, and all of a sudden you're in the spotlight and that's who you are. So that's one of my favorite memories because it actually triggered something creative for me to share with the people that we work with. So thank you for that, Dave. Awesome. Let's see Chuck's <laughs> video and then we're yes. going to sign off. And just keep in touch with our Instagram and Facebook so that yes. you can always be alerted. We're having the guests next week. The special guest artists uh, will be joining yes. us. Yes, Monday. I'm not sure what time yet, but who we're going to have? Yeah. Uh, Tracy Peter Silverman Peters. and um, Eric Gorfain. And yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to have Alex Depew as well next Monday. So let hang on a second. Let me try to get Chuck's video pulled up for you. <laughs> Hello, M Rock. This is Chuck.
Chuck coming to you from my studio in Chicagoland. I am just sitting down here working on some new sounds for camp. What I am most excited about is that all of you are going to have the ability to make all of these sounds. Let me explain how. You're going to have access to a digital audio workstation that's going to allow you to write your own loops, compose your own songs, record your own instruments, and manipulate all of those sounds. And the only equipment that you're going to need are your instrument, acoustic or electric, and a laptop, or even the mobile device of your choice, maybe even the device that you're using to watch this right now. Yeah? In fact, let me show you. This is the complete rig that I used to record the soundtrack for this video. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I did also use a bow. That's it. That's all you're going to need. <coughs> this audio workstation is going to integrate seamlessly into the LMS that runs the whole camp. It's going to be smooth. It's going to be sweet. Later at camp, there are going to be some advanced digital uh, distortion workshops. Don't want you to have to do without that. Um, but I am so excited about all of it. Can't wait to jump in with you guys. Stay safe. See you in a few weeks. Said it all. Thank you. Isn't that Chuck. Awesome. Awesome. Well, anyway, thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Continue the mission of getting the word out. Tell all your friends. You don't have to leave home. You can hang with us at the home edition. Peace and love. MW Rock Home Edition. We love all of you and we hope to see you in just a couple of weeks. Bye.